When I compare these strings with double equals, it works. So why does every Java course tell you to compare strings with the equals method instead? Java has layers of concepts and optimizations built on top of each other, which can be confusing, but I'm going to break it down step by step. The thing is, string comparisons with double equals are weird, like this works, but if I just extract the first part into a variable, it doesn't anymore. And what human would reasonably say that these two programs are different? It's even stranger with integers. Here, 5 equals 5, but apparently 200 doesn't equal 200? What is really going on? To get to the bottom of this, we need to understand the two types of data in Java, and literals which interact with both of them. Data comes in two flavours, primitives and objects. This distinction is crucial for understanding why some things in Java work the way they do, especially when it comes to comparing values. Primitives are the basic building blocks of data in Java, and they're stored directly in memory. Objects are more complex, and the way they're stored is more complicated. Objects have the ability to contain other objects and primitives. In general, an object could be expensive to create and store, so Java tries to be efficient with how it stores them in memory. So here we have two people, and they both live at the same address. Instead of storing the address twice, Java stores the address once and has both people reference it. On the other hand, because the ages are primitives, each person has their own age. Instead of referencing the age, they're stored directly in memory. In fact, even if two people have the same age, Java will still store two copies of the age. This is because primitives are very small and so cheap to store. It's not worth the overhead of trying to share them. Strings are not small and cheap like primitives. They can be very long and take up a lot of memory. So strings are not primitives, they're objects. They're stored in memory in a similar way to the address object from earlier. They are a bit special though, and we'll get to that. What does double equals actually do then? It depends whether you're comparing primitives or objects. For primitives, double equals compares the actual values. And for objects, double equals compares the references. A reference is a memory address. When you create an object, Java stores it somewhere in memory and gives you a reference to it. When you pass an object to a method, you're actually passing the reference to the object, not the object itself. So why is 200 not equal to 200? Because of literals, autoboxing, and caching. First, note that big I integer is an object, not a primitive. Double equals works as expected for primitives. And if we create the integer objects manually, we get false because double equals compares references and the references are different. Let's talk about literals. Literals are the actual values you literally write in your code, like five or hello world. The compiler does some magic with them depending on the context, like autoboxing. When you write the literal five and assign it to a big I integer, Java automatically converts it into an integer object for you. This is called autoboxing, and it's a feature of Java that automatically converts primitives to their object equivalents when you need them to be objects. It's there to save you from having to write boilerplate code to convert between primitives and objects all the time. But integer value of has a little trick. Java checks if the number is between minus 128 and 127, and if it is, it returns a cached integer object. If it's not, it creates a new one. This is to save memory and improve performance for frequently used numbers, and it's why double equals has inconsistent behavior with big I integers depending on the value. It works a little differently for strings, but quickly, why does big I integer even exist? Primitives are faster and take up less memory, but objects are more flexible and can do more things, like be null or used in collections. Crucially, integer is not a primitive, and integer is not just a fancy name for int. So what about strings? This time there's no explicit cache like with integer value of, but Java has a special optimization for strings called string interning. Like with integers, if we create the strings manually, we get false, because double equals compares references, and the references are different. But when you write a string literal, Java checks if it's already in the string pool. If it is, it returns a reference to the existing string, and if not, it adds it to the string pool and returns a reference to the new string. This is to avoid storing the same string multiple times. It's like a fancier version of integer caching, but this only works at compile time. You can manually intern strings at runtime, but it's not something you do every day. Here's a quick summary. If you learned something, consider joining our community of learners and subscribing for more.